Hello, and welcome to Ed Head's Virtual Hospital. I am the resident surgeon, Dr. Fisher. Today, you will help me perform a hip replacement surgery. Before we scrub in, let's complete the pre-op work for this patient. Ready? Our patient is a 62-year-old female with fairly healthy bones. She is 5 foot, 8 inches tall, and weighs 190 pounds. Based on this patient's x-rays, which hip do you think needs surgery? Great job! As you can see, most of the cartilage or cushion between the bones is gone, especially in the upper portion of the hip joint. Now, we must template or measure the hip to determine what size prosthetics to use. I'll hold the templates up to this x-ray and you find the correct fit. The stem, a metal piece that will fit into the femur, should be no wider than the canal in the middle of the bone. Which size stem do you think works best for this patient? Great work! Now we need to determine the size of the metal cup. Again, using a template. Which size do you think will work for this patient? Yes, that is correct. The OR team has prepped and draped our patient. We are now ready to operate. First, locate the top of the greater trochanter bone and use the sterile marker to mark the incision area. Start 3 centimeters above the greater trochanter and go down 5 to 10 centimeters below the greater trochanter. Pick up the scalpel. Carefully cut through the skin and the subcutaneous layer of fat following the incision line you just made. Way to slice! Let's use the Bovi pencil and cauterize the vessels to reduce blood flow into the surgical field. Now use the lap sponge to soak up the remaining blood. Insert the retractors. Using the scalpel, cut through the gluteus maximus muscle to the tensor fascia lata muscle. Again, cauterize any blood vessels using the bovi so as to reduce blood flow into the surgical field. Pull back the split muscles using the deep retractors. You must be careful of the sciatic nerve, which can be It is critically important to protect the sciatic nerve through this procedure. Why? Good job! I already cut the six muscles that connect to the top of the femur. I then folded the whole set of muscles back as one flap. Now we are able to see the flexible sac or capsule around the joint. Cut open the capsule and put in sutures to hold it back. Next, dislocate the femoral head by flexing and rotating the femur. We can now see the back of the femoral head and how arthritic the joint is. Before we saw into the femur, use a retractor to protect the sciatic nerve and external rotator muscles from an accidental slip. Now, take the bone saw and cut through the neck of the femur. Remove the femoral head. During pre-op templating, we decided to use a 52 millimeter prosthetic cup. We will need to use reamers that are slightly smaller than that in order to prepare the bone for the cup. Let's start with the 46 millimeter reamer. We'll aim the reamer toward the top back portion of the bony cup where most of the wear is. Otherwise, we will end up with an uneven cup. Why should we try to ream more towards the top? I think you've had a little too much coffee this morning. Yeah! I'll finish with a size 51 millimeter reamer, preparing the acetabulum for the prosthetic cup. 
Note that we are staying one size smaller than the final 52 millimeter prosthetic. The prosthetic cup is mounted on an insertion device, which also serves as a guide to achieve correct orientation. Align the insertion device with the guides. The part of the metal cup that is in contact with the bone is rough, allowing the bone to attach or grow to the cup. This is known as bone in growth and is important to the long-term stability of the prosthesis. Tap the cup into the acetabulum until the bone completely surrounds the edge of the metal cup. The plastic liner will act as a cushion between the metal parts of the prosthetic. Tap the plastic liner into the cup and I'll lock it into place with an expanding metal ring. The liner is designed to offer a bit more coverage at the top back part of the cup. Why would this be the case? Not quite. Great work! Place a retractor directly under the femur, near where you removed the head. This will elevate the femur. Use the box osteotome to cut a rectangular segment out of the femur. This will allow access to the medullary canal of the femur, which is where the stem prosthetic will go. Remember, we've templated this patient to a size 13 stem. Start with a size 12 rasp to size the bone for the stem prosthetic. Use the mallet to tap the rasp into the bone. Good. I'm going to rasp the bone again using a size 13. Take the handle off the final rasp. Place the trial ball onto the end of the rasp. I'll pop the ball into the plastic cup. Now we're ready to test the range of motion, making sure all the components are the correct size and that the leg is able to move freely. The first test is leg length. Check to see if the kneecaps and the heels align with each other. Are they in alignment? Great job! Next, rotate the foot and knee out and away from the other leg. Great! This indicates a good range of motion in those directions and that our patient's hip will be stable. Now, let's check the forward and inner rotation of the hip. Move the knee up toward the body to 90 degrees as if it looks like we have good motion in that direction. Now move the knee down toward the table to test inner rotation. She has about 60 degrees rotation in this direction, which is a good number. It looks like the prosthetics are a good fit for this patient. I'll dislocate the ball from the plastic cup and remove the ball and the rasp. Before we put the real prosthetic stem in, the osteophytes or bone spurs will need to be removed. Use the rangeur to remove the osteophytes. Why does the patient have osteophytes? Not quite. Yes, that is correct. Finally, tap the prosthetic stem into the femur bone. It's the ball on the end of the stem. I'll pop the ball into the plastic cup. We're almost finished. Let's close up the incision. Take the suture down through the piriformis and the external rotator muscles. Using the needle, suture the piriformis muscle. I'll close the gluteus maximus and then the tensor fasciolata tendon. Now you suture the subcutaneous fat together. This is an important step to ensure the incision stays together until healed. Now use staples to close the skin. The OR team will bandage the incision. You've done a great job. I can see a promising career in orthopedics for you. Our patient has made it out of the OR and will stay two to three days in the hospital, followed by six to eight weeks of recovery and physical therapy. This will allow her muscles to heal and strengthen. 
She should have significantly less pain and a much higher quality of life. Come back and assist us anytime.